Hello everyone, this is Miss Kathy from Techno Kids, and we are here today to do some winter science and engineering fun. Um, we have all kinds of fun things to do um, that will kind of keep you uh, busy for the winter and you'll learn something real, some really cool facts too. First of all, I'd like to start out by showing you some really good books that I would recommend that are probably at the library um, that you might enjoy reading that are science related. Um, the first book I have is uh, Animals in Winter, and this is a really good book that explains all kinds of things that animals do during the winter, their habitats and things like that. Really, really good. And then I also have something called, uh, another book called Polar Animals, and this actually has um, really awesome illustrations and gives some information, science information about different um, animals and things like that. Today, we are going to focus uh, some of our experiments on snow. And snow, I have been learning all kinds of things about snow. And this, um, this book, which I'm not going to read today, but I just got myself, it's awesome. This is a biography. It's about a real person called Snowflake, Snowflake Bentley. And it is a Caldecott Award winner. And the book that I'm going to share some of has some information about uh, Snowflake Bentley. So I'm going to just uh, pass that along. So this is by Jacqueline Briggs Martin and illustrated by Mary Azarian. Very highly recommend this book. He was an awesome and interesting individual and a man before his time. He studied snowflakes. So the book that I'm going to share some of is called um, Curious About Snow, and it's a Smithsonian book. It's by Gina Shaw, and they have some awesome illustrations. Now, if you look at this cover, those are actual snowflakes, believe it or not, okay? Have you ever built a snow fort or tossed snowballs or caught a snowflake on your tongue or wished you could Try this where you live. Snow often makes people stop what they're doing to watch it fall from the sky. But what is snow and how is it formed? To snow, the temperature must be below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the freezing point of water. Water vapor, a gas that is produced when water evaporates, sticks to a cold speck inside a cloud and it makes it wet. This speck can be a particle of soil or salt left over from the ocean water that evaporated. It can be pollen from a flower or ash from a volcano, among other things. Inside the cloud, more water vapor sticks to the wet speck and forms a water droplet. The droplet freezes into a ball of ice and, move, and more water vapor sticks to it. So it, in order for it to snow, if it's, not, if it's above 32 degrees, it's rain or some other form of, we call that precipitation, okay? So, and it's amazing that it starts with a speck of something. It could be dust, it could be uh, part of a volcano. I thought that was so interesting. Water vapor sticks to crystals six corners first, since they stick out farther than any other part of the crystal. As the six corners grow and push outward, they begin to form arms. This pro process is called branching. Soon, an amazing snow crystal forms. To scientists, snowflakes and snow crystals are the same thing. So it starts out as, do you know the shape? Hexagon, right? Six shape, six sided, right? So you see it has one, two, three, four, five, six points. And then they start, so that's how it starts and the little crystals start to stick to it. And then the arms are this part right here, okay? Pretty cool, huh? Um, <clears throat> the snow crystals keep growing as it falls through the cloud. The size of the snowflake depends on how many ice crystals connect together. An average size snowflake is usually made up of about 200 ice crystals and 180 billion molecules of water. So think about how small snow is and that all in that one little flake has all of that. About 200 ice crystals and 180 billion molecules of water. Um, when the snowflake becomes heavy enough, it falls through the cloud to the ground. It continues to grow and change as it falls toward the earth. If the ground is cold enough, the snowflake will stick to it and won't melt right away. So if it is snowing today, I would highly recommend that you go outside and observe the snowflakes. They are something to see when you really pay attention to them. It's fun to play, it's fun to make snowballs, but when you watch and you look at an individual snowflake, try to catch it on your tongue, try to catch it on your glove, it is an, a beautiful, almost like a piece of art, right? But it's really science. How do we know as much as we do about snowflakes? Now this is about, this is about 
this man right here that the whole book is about, but this is this page is about William A. Bentley. He was a man who loved snow so much that he studied it for most of his life. Bentley was born on February 9th, 1865. So that is way over 150 years ago. So that's a long time ago. So think about how we didn't have the technology that we do now and things like that. He grew up and worked on his family farm in Vermont. That is where it snows a lot. The yearly snowfall in Jericho, Vermont is about 120 inches. It was a perfect place to learn about snow. So if you have this book at your library or seem to have something like this, you can use your math skills by measuring what is 120 inches. I'll tell you what, it is more than double of my size. Okay, I'm pretty short, but my if you put step two of me up on top of each other, it would still be more snow than that. That is a lot of snow. So think about what maybe you want to measure what 102 inches is. That's a lot. You'll be amazed. As a young boy, Bentley enjoyed studying the world from around him. Butterflies, leaves, spider webs, or weather conditions, raindrops, and snowflakes. Bentley loved catching a single snowflake and studying them. Bentley's mother gave him an old microscope for his 15th birthday. Looking at snowflakes through his microscope, he was amazed by the beautiful crystals and by how many different types of snowflakes he found. For three winters, Bentley drew 100 snowflakes a year, but the snow crystals always melted before he could finish drawing them. This was very frustrating. So what he would do is he, tried, he would try to draw the crystals as he saw them, but it's hard to do that because they melt, especially if you only have one. If you have many of them together, then they stick. But to exam and then, but when they stick together, you really don't see the beauty of the snowflake, right? When Bentley turned 17, his parents bought him a, a bellows camera and a new microscope. He attached the microscope to the camera and spent the next two years trying to photograph snowflakes. Snowflakes are very difficult to photograph because they melt so quickly. But finally, on January 5th, 1885, when he was 19 years old, Bentley became the first person ever to photograph a single snowflake. He then went on to capture more than 5,000 images of snow crystals. Because of, this ama of his amazing work, he became known as the Snowflake Man and was also known as Snowflake Bentley. So this is, you can see by the picture that that was a long time ago. He was very much before his time. He, and to think about how difficult it would be to um, photograph a snowflake, because it melts so quickly, right? Many of his colleagues and many colleges and universities around the world bought Bentley's snow crystal photographs. He published about 60 articles in magazines and journals. His book, Snow Crystals, was published in 1931, the same year that he died. Snow crystals contain more than 2,400 photographs. Bentley wanted people to be able to study and enjoy his snowflake photographs. His mission was to record something that disappeared very quickly. So th these are real photographs of snowflakes. I want you to see how beautiful, they almost look like jewelry. Look at how beautiful. And notice that they're on a, on black, on a black surrounding, so that's because they could see them um, better. Pretty cool, huh? Wilson Brad Bentley proved that snowflakes had different shapes, but almost all had six sides. Star-shaped snowflakes are called stellar dendrites. Um, and th this is just some more, these are different kinds, right? This is a different kind of weather than this one right here. So you see they're, they look beautiful, almost like mirrors, right? All right, and then um, modern scientists and photographers have continued Wilson Bentley's work. Their photographs like this tell more about different snowflakes. And this is showing needles or our very thin snow crystals. So here's just some different kinds. Um, very beautiful, very beautiful. Um, it is highly unlikely that any two snowflakes, snowflakes ever look the same. They are all, they all form in their own way, even though they start out as the same structure, usually a hexagon. Um, so much can happen as a snow crystal falls to the earth. For example, if a water droplet passes close to one arm, that arm might grow faster. Soon that arm will be a lot longer than the others. For this reason, most snowflakes are not perfect. They may grow unevenly, break, melt, and refreeze, or come out, come in contact with other crystals. And so here's some that are not so perfect, but they start out as six, with six hexagonal sides. Pretty cool, huh? 
and I'm going to stop reading that book, but you can finish if you're interested in this. This is, uh, has all kinds of other interesting information about snow. So I would highly recommend this book. It's really, really good. So with that, we're going to start our first experiment. Now, when people go through, when you go through an experiment, you start with um, asking a question and then you form a hypothesis. And the hypothesis is what you think or educated guess about what you think might happen. And then you perform the experiment and then you come up to a conclusion and see what happens. So this experiment, you are going to need your parents super or, or a, an adult to help you with this um, because it involves boiling water and something called borax. So um, I'm going to start. Um, I have this jar of jar and I'm going to put about one cup. Wait, first of all, I'm not going to do that first. First, I'm going to, what we are going to do is we're going to make a crystallized uh, snowflake and you can make any kind of, if you want to make Christmas decorations, this can be a Christmas decoration when you're done with it. So with that, you're going to need a pipe cleaner and you're going to need some string and um, a popsicle stick and a gla like a glass jar or something that won't that will take the heat. Very important. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a snowflake since that's what we're kind of learning that we just learned about. So to make a snowflake out of a, um, a pipe cleaner, I'm going to take it and I'm going to make how many sides? Six, six little pieces, right? So I'm going to take them like this. Okay. So one, two, three, four, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces. All right. And then I'm going to um, bind them together. Just twist them. You guys have probably worked with um, pipe cleaners before. And like I said, if you would like to um, make a candy cane or you would like to make some sort of a, just an ornament, you can um, absolutely do that. And actually I made six pieces, but if you wanted to make three pieces and just twist three pieces around, it would make six. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. So with that, I have my little snowflake right here. Okay. And now I'm going to make sure I'm going to do a little test before I do the experiment. I'm going to make sure that it will fit in the jar because that's very important before we put the hot water in. So I'm going to tie my string around the snowflake, make it kind of loose so that you can get it undone after, or it could be like a hook. It doesn't, it really is up to you. And I am going to make sure that it fits in the jar like that, because it has to, very important that it, the whole um, pipe cleaner is submerged in the substance that we're gonna do. All right, and then we're gonna need that. So, so what, now this seems to work fine, it fits in the jar. So I'm good with that. So now I'm going to add hot water to this jar. And again, making sure that it will cover the, uh, enough to cover the um, pipe cleaner, okay? And to this water, I'm going to add something called borax. And a borax is, you might have used this when you made slime. It is a, um, it is a household cleaner. A lot of people use it in their laundry. Um, it is not edible, so please do not eat it. Again, uh, this is an experiment that you need your parents to help you with. And we are going to add about four tablespoons of this, this um, borax to this hot water. And we want to see it be clouded because it has to be something, it has to, um, uh, we want it so that it, it, it can't absorb any more of the, of the borax. We want a lot of borax in there. So I'm gonna put, four tablespoons in first and then I'm gonna give it a stir and see what happens and again you might want to observe if you have a magnifying glass you might want to observe the borax beforehand it is like a white powder do not ever eat it again that's what I you know all right so if we look here we see that the liquid the water is is cloudy right and that's what we want we want it to be able to not absorb any more of the borax, right? Let's give it a stir. And that looks like there's plenty right there. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my snowflake in this solution. This is called the solution, right? And you are going to make sure that it's all under the water and that it kind of is not touching either. You kind of want it like hanging in suspense, suspension like thing. And then you're gonna take this popsicle stick and you are going to wrap it around it so you can get it and check it out and see how it's going easily. So um, I'm going to kind of get it so that I can, it's not touching the bottom, but it's not, so it's not um, hanging out of the top. So you can't really see it right now, but you are going to leave this um, for at least 24 hours. You're gonna leave it in the, in the just to get somewhere in your kitchen probably. And when 24 hours is up, you're gonna pull this up and you're gonna see something very, very cool. It's gonna look like a snowflake. It's gonna look like all those crystals, all the borax crystals are gonna to stick to each other. They're gonna to stick to the pipe cleaner. The pipe cleaner has all that fuzzy stuff. And so it likes to, to adhere to it. And you are going to see a very, very cool um, ornament that you could put on your tree that is also science-based. Um, again, if it's not quite ready in 24 hours, you can leave it for 48 hours, but by four, two days, I'm sure you will have the results you want. Um, and then what you can do is you take it out of, take it out of here and let it dry. It'll, all those borax crystals will attach to each other and they, the rest of it will, they'll evaporate. And so they'll stick to each other and then you can put it on like a little paper towel, let it dry and then you can hang it on your tree. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So that's our first experiment. Okay, making an ice, like I said, again, you can make whatever shape out of your um, pipe cleaner that you want. All right, um, now the second uh, experiment that I'm going to do is I'm going to, we are going to make a, a snowstorm in a jar. Okay, so, uh, so the first thing I have is, and if you've done any um, programs with me, you might have been lucky enough to see a version of this. So I have a vase here. And I am going to put some water in this vase. This could be just room temperature, it doesn't have to have a specific degree. Okay. And then I want you to watch what happens. I'm gonna add some oil to this vase. And I want you to see what happens when I add this oil. So again, I'm gonna ask a question, what will happen when oil and water are mixed. Do they mix together? And the second question I'm going to ha uh, ask you is, um, I'm going to have you make a hypothesis and then I'm going to have you observe what happens, okay? So what do you think will happen when I add this vinegar? So not vinegar, oil. So this is oil, this is canola oil. You could use vegetable oil. Any kind of oil that you have is, will work. So I'm going to pour, I'm going to pour the rest of the bottle in here. We're going to just go big here, all right? So remember, I put the water at the bottom. And you see that you can see the layer, you can see the layers of that, right? You see the water is at the bottom and the vinegar is at top and you see little bubbles, right? That's because oil and water will not mix. If I would have put the oil in first and then the water, guess what? They would have switched places and they would still, the oil would be on top. It wouldn't matter, that's called density. The oil is less dense than the water, okay? So to this, I am now gonna add some white paint. Now, if you don't have white paint, that is okay. You can also use food coloring. In fact, I think food coloring, it won't look like a snowstorm, but it'll look very, very cool. So observe, again, observe what happens when I add these little globules of white paint through the oil. So if you look at first, they are kind of sitting on, they're not going, they're not in the water yet. And they're also not in the, um, they're not at the top of the oil. They're so kind of sitting at the oil, but guess what, look what happens. See that? Now the water, it's breaking through, right? Pretty cool, right? Not a snowstorm yet. Okay, so I'm gonna add, I have that paint. Now I'm going to add some glitter. And I just have these, this pretty purple um, shimmery glitter. You could add whatever kind of glitter you have, or you don't have to add glitter. If you just, like I said, this is, this, I've seen this experiment done a couple different, with a couple different things. I'm gonna put that on top, and you see that is act, reacts different to the 
paint. The paint stayed at the base where the water and the oil meet from it and then it went down and now the, the um, glitter, it, now it's, it's slowly, it looks like it's snowing, doesn't it? I'm gonna put a little more in there, that's pretty cool. So it stays at the, at the surface and then eventually it rains down, right? All right, so that's not what I'm, that's not yet, it's gonna even look cooler. So now it looks very beautiful, but now I'm going to add uh, the last ingredient and that is um, a Alka-Seltzer. And Alka-Seltzer, when you add, Alka-Seltzer is uh, like a little medicine that pair, adults usually, if they have a tummy, stomach ache or something like that, they'll take it to relieve their, um, their, their stomach ache and it forms carbon dioxide bubbles. So what's, so what do you think? What is your, oh, look at that. Ooh, that was something. Did you see that? A big glob of all that fell down. Cause it, it, so that's pretty cool. I wonder what it's gonna look. So now I'm going to add the Alka-Seltzer to this and we are gonna watch and observe what happens, okay? Here, I'm gonna put the whole tablet. If you wanna break the tablet into smaller pieces, you can do that too. Okay, so when I put it in, it goes all the way to the bottom. Nothing much is happening now, but you see that now they're starting to... I wonder what's gonna happen to that globule. Let me try to get that. I'll try to put one in there so I can see. So you see that, what are you observing? Can you see it? You're observing that the bubbles are coming up to the top and what it's doing is it's taking, I'm gonna to try to get one in here by the, by the glitter bomb. I don't know what that's gonna do. Never really had that happen before. So you see, that was hard to see, that the, the paint is kind of, they're forming little ball, balls here and they're going up and down. The glitter's working the best. And it's attaching to the carbon dioxide bubbles, going to the top and then releasing and then going back to the bottom. That's what's giving it that up and down effect. Let's see, I hope you can see this better than. Now you will see this much better if you do this in your house, I guarantee this. And it doesn't have to be this much oil. You can use a smaller container, any kind of container that you want will work. And you should see, so it'll work until the elk seltzer is worn out and then it'll kind of, it'll kind of stop and slow down and then it'll all settle back into its density where, where it belongs and how dense it, everything is, okay? So that's pretty cool, right? That was the second experiment, okay? Now, uh, the next kind of sticking with the snow theme or whatever, we're going to do a little engineering challenge. And when you do an engineering challenge, you're building, usually you're building something. And there is a process that you go through when you build. You, you kind of think there's usually a problem to solve. And you think about what the problem is. Then you imagine what it could be, how you could solve that problem. Then you uh, make a plan. Now, I'm not gonna make a plan right now, but a plan is like a picture. So I would maybe design, maybe make a quick sketch of a, we're gonna make a snowflake out of marshmallows. And um, I said toothpicks, but uh, I didn't have any toothpicks. So we're gonna use spaghetti and it'll work even probably even better if not just as good. Um, so if you have toothpicks, you could do this with toothpicks. If you don't, you could use long um, spaghetti noodles or linguine noodles and it will work just fine. Um, so you draw a sketch of what you think a beautiful snowflake might be. Or another fun challenge that we've tried at a library, the libraries before is to build the snowest, the tallest snowman. You could maybe challenge your brothers and sisters out of the marshmallows. So those are just two ideas of things you can do with leftover marshmallows, okay? So I'm gonna show you. Uh, here is a little plate with some marshmallows and some um, my little spaghetti noodles. You could break these into any size you want. I am going to take my big uh, marshmallow and I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut them in about half, okay? And I'm going to take six, because remember hexagon, that's six, six sides, all right? Three, four, five. And like we talked about that there's, that most, that there, they think that there's, that Every snowflake is a little bit different. So you could use any kind of your, you could use your imagination any way that you want, okay? And put these on. Um, 
You can make a pattern with them or you could just use your own creativity. That is up to you. Okay, you can add some more to it to kind of give it a little dimension. You could add some going this way to see what that might look like. Let's see, do I have any more? I don't. So if I wanted to take this and put this, well, let me just tell you that the marshmallows get sticky quick, just so you know, like mine are already sticky. If you wanted to put the pasta or the um, toothpicks between, you can go ahead and you could just go on and on and on and, may, and develop, see what you can, see how intricate, intricate means fancy, you can make it. So that's just a fun, like I said, a fun STEM engineering challenge. Go through the process, maybe draw a design. You can challenge your brothers and sisters to see who can make the most detailed one, who can make the coolest one, who could, um, this, you could, like I said, do a snowman using toothpicks and see how tall you can get it, measure it so you're using some math skills, but you don't even know you're using your skills. And that, that's what makes it even more fun. All right, I have two more uh, experiments for you. Um, the one, if you have um, some candy canes, everyone has candy canes this time of year. And so this experiment, what you can do with this, this is another one that you're not gonna see the results of right away. You're going to have to um, wait for um, the results of this, but um, you can have a couple of things of water. This has, let's see, I labeled this hot water. And again, you're not going to see the results of this. This is something that you're going to have to do on your hot water. And then I have, I put some ice cubes in a container. So that's the cold water. And I have a third, which if you want to just do hot and cold, you can do hot and cold. If you want to do a third one, you could add any kind of liquid. You could maybe try um, a pop of soda or I'm going to try vinegar to see because that has an acid in it. So the third choice is your choice, whatever you want and to see the results of, or you can just do hot and cold. All right. And so this is so simple. All I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hypothesis about what I think will melt or what will happen to these, the candy canes as I place them in these three different um, types of temperatures and substances okay and like i said you might have to let this set for a couple hours and see what happens maybe even a day you'll have to see all right so all you do i tried the big candy canes they probably will break before you get them out of the package but that's okay i have these small ones here so i'm going to put one in the hot water one in the cold water and one in the vinegar and then you are simply going to observe it maybe every hour, every half an hour to see what your results are. And this could be a good writing. You could record your data and see what's happening. Record, tell about your observations, tell what you see. Um, I already see mine, the warm was, I see the red is starting to come off. It looks like the, the, the vinegar one, it looks like it's, um, I think it's just the magnification, but it looks a little thicker, but I'm sure it's not. And another fun thing I, I saw, I, not, I have not tried it yet, that you could do with candy canes is if you bake them at like in a low temperature, like 250 degrees for like five minutes, that they stretch. Now you might want to try that too. That sounds pretty fun. Okay, so now our last challenge is an engineering challenge is to create a tree using uh, everyone in your family or whoever's participating can get a certain number, you say seven uh, pipe cleaners, and then you try to construct using maybe some straws or some beads, the coolest and the highest Christmas tree or the fattest Christmas tree, you decide what, how you want to do it. So you could use these and you can just build upon it and create um, different layers of your Christmas tree and things like that. So that's just some very fun, educational and uh, easy science experiments that you can do during uh, maybe your winter break or when you're bored during this winter, uh, winter that will keep you learning and uh, having some fun. I also want to just show you one more time that this is what the, you can kind of see the snowflake now. It doesn't, nothing is really happening yet, but I would love you to contact the library and let, let us know what kind of results you had. Send, send some pictures on the chat or on the Facebook page. We would love to see that. 
All right, everyone, keep go outside and enjoy the winter. Look at those snowflakes and learn some fun things. Have a great day. Bye now.